Tabernacle Gastonia. So glad to be coming in your home uh, with the live streaming. So glad to have those that are here tonight. Maybe others coming in, but it's a couple minutes past six, and we want to get started. We do love you. Uh, text in during the service. Let us know that you're listening to us. We're so glad to hear from you. If you have a prayer request, if you would uh, uh, text that in at the end of the program, Donnie will write them down and bring them to me. And I so much appreciate you being part of us. Appreciate you that are here tonight. I uh, got a couple announcements we're going to make. We got camp meeting coming up October the 11th, 14th through the 14th. That's the second Sunday in October, and we're going through Wednesday night. Uh, uh, on that with Brother Chandley from Watuffka, Alabama. Be five services Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. If you've already got plans, we understood it. Stan, we had to get that together late. But if you hadn't got plans, don't make any unless you absolutely had to. Amen. It's hard to keep up with who's going to be here and who ain't. But we're looking for a great time in the Lord. We want you to be part of that. Amen. It's time again to fix the the bags, and we have these up here if you'd like to look. The only thing that is wrong with this one, it's in a gallon bag. We ain't got two gallon bags. They require it being a two gallon bag. And uh, uh, these these were fixed. This is a little girl's, I think. As long as it will close. As long as it will close, it probably would be all right. But most of the time, a gallon bag won't close. So they're up here if you want to look at them afterwards. We got three. And uh, they're really not in the right bag. We got one fixed for a boy child and a girl child and one for a teenager. And uh, you can fix them for five bucks at the dollar store. You can buy five dollar items. And uh, there's certain things you can't have, like they can't have anything, uh, like any kind of food or candy or crackers. They won't let you take that in. But you can send them a toothbrush or toothpaste. They might not have one, you know? Anything like that. It, it, you know, socks and stuff is kind of hard to buy because you don't know what size kit it is. But we mostly put colored books, crayons, uh, a, a little doll. Uh, don't give anything to be offensive. Don't get a little boy a kid a gun. Hey, man, they don't, we got enough people giving them guns, you know. We give them colored books and crayons and dolls and anything that they can play with and not get hurt. You can look at these three bags and kind of get an example if you'd like to. We appreciate it. I want to go to the Lord in prayer. I want to pray for uh, Shirley Wilson, Charles Clark, David Brooks, Colleen Woody, Dee Dee Woody, Kay and uh, Kaylee Eason, A.C. Wells, Chad Bridges, and his mom, Vernon and Debbie West, Wayne and Kay Coda, Nettie Teague, Louise Grant, and Jeff and Linda Randall from the Morrisboro Church. Pray for my grandson, Vesta, and his family was in a uh, horrific car accident yesterday. Vesta was, but... They're all reeling from it, and uh, it was a miracle. I may say something about it when I preach, but it is a miracle. And I can tell you tonight that uh, four cars on the interstate highway and uh, all four cars total, and all four people got out and walked away. Two of them hit bridges, you know. I mean, it could have been like the one I was in. Thank God it wasn't that bad, but there's still a lot to be taken care of. So. I ain't got the police report, and we're going from what we think happened, you know, but just uh, just pray that uh, God will take care of us and heal his body's a little sore today and touch Brian and Summer and all, me and Betty and all our family that's dealing with this, and we'll say more about it when we preach. Summer gave a good testimony this morning. If she wants to come up here and do it again tonight, she can or when she sings, uh, but I'm not sure everybody heard her from where she uh, testified today. And, uh, but it is on Facebook if you can hear it. Maybe she'll do it again tonight or Wednesday night. It was a good testimony. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, remember, I think I got it. Let me see. Logan Fletcher. He's recovering from cancer and COVID-19. Keep praying for Cat Wilson's healing. Brother Steve Fuel to be completely healed. His family. Uh, pray for uh, my sisters and their families. Remember the prayer line request that was called in this week. And uh, remember all the uh, bereaved families, uh, Ronnie Simmons, Reverend Ronnie Simmons passed away, Cat Wilson's niece, Samantha, and Casey's brother, Jerry Porter, and all the bereaved families, remember them. A spoken request, let God see your hand tonight, anywhere and everywhere. Anybody up here got one tonight? Pray for you, Lester. Yeah, thank for, you. And pray for uh, Diane's sister, Susie. And Diane Johnson's sister, Susie, was on the prayer request, but some of you remember them. Uh, last I heard from them, they think she had a stroke, and uh, they were taking her to the hospital in the ambulance, and I told them we were praying. And
keep me posted. And uh, you asked us Cochran, how many of those you asked us Cochran? Amen. Uh, was a was a deacon here for uh, many years. He was a deacon here when I came here four years ago. His wife Barbara uh, passed away a few years ago. They were just backbone of this church, and and the last few years they moved to the mountains and moved away, and we kind of lost contact. And uh, but uh, uh, he had what they think is a heart attack, going to have a heart catheter Tuesday. So be praying for him that God would touch him. Those are the ones called in with any more. I think that was it. Somebody out here? Anybody? What about here? So tell us. Uh, my, my, I have a prayer call, and a prayer call for a baby to come to see the other week. We had to take her to the hospital last night because she didn't want to see me. Need two? One prayer call for two? Two. 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 That's what I thought she said. Sometimes we don't get it all. But you know, I'm preaching tonight about God knows my voice. And so when you say something I don't hear, or right. how people in the church besides myself that have hearing uh, are hearing impaired, and sometimes they'll tell me, say, what was that you said? I don't hear, I don't mind telling you again. But uh, you know, uh, but if you say it, ain't nobody, if I say it, nobody understands what I said. He heard my voice. Right. He hears your voice, he hears your groanings and your utterings. Isn't that wonderful to know, amen? Amen. That he does. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Sister Marsha. A young couple in our neighborhood um, had their baby and a little girl. And she only lasted, she only lived two days, um, had some complications. But they're, they're really upset about that. So we pray for them. Her name is Kristen and Kyle. Okay. You can give it to me later or write it down on my list up here where I'll have it. But do pray for that family. Anybody else? He never went. I've texted with him a couple of times today, yesterday, and since her time. Matthew Jane. Okay, somebody else over here. Susie had some kind of seizure, not a stroke, okay. And, um, also, when we was doing it, stuff in the Memphis City when I was there, same as DJ. He just turned 18 and he got shot last night, and he still still pray for DJ's family. DJ's family, amen. Yeah. Oh, was it someone you used to work with at the Warwick School? No, he was in Jasper City. Jasper City, okay. Still sad, amen. Uh, we're not waking up to that this morning. You hear what I said? We're not waking up to that this morning. Thank you, Lord. I don't know if you're glad, but I sure am glad. Amen. Yes. yes. And praise the Lord. That could have been us. I mean, that could have been us. Ain't belaboring the point. But I just, I just, God spoke to me through that, through the circumstances this week, and I'll share that with you in the Word of God tonight. Also, my, my regional manager at Crestwell, his name is Scott. I understand he has some kind of blood clot in his arm. That's God. Man, nothing to be alarmed about, but I'm having trouble with my feet, uh, swelling, you know, so I don't walk around real good. I don't want nobody feeling sorry for me, but they're swelling up, and I can't hardly walk when they do, so pray for me. Amen? Amen. Anybody else have prayer tonight? Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer, and uh, Brother Tommy, come on when uh, we're through. Uh, you can come on. Uh, we're praying for these for Sister Ella. Donnie, come and get these and just pray with me and then you can give them to her. Amen. Lead the prayer, Donnie. Father, we just come Father right now, in Jesus' Lord. name, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity of prayer. We just pray that you bless and move and meet every need. In Jesus' name we pray. God, I love you and I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, praise the name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship with Donnie.
bring you tithes and offerings tonight. Brother Donnie, if you would pray with all. Father, we just love you tonight, Lord God. We uh, come into your presence. We're singing, Lord. Father, now we're just going to bring our tithes and offerings to the altar, Lord God. We just thank you for what you do for us, Lord God. And we'll be short. If we didn't thank you, Lord God, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Though the tempest rages, I shall not be stuff nowadays and sometimes we don't understand why we're going through stuff we're going through but the only thing I can tell you is you can't make it without the Lord right. we need him in our lives every day, every minute you know, I told you about the incident I had this morning, we got up this morning and started to go to church, realized we had a, tie, a, 
a nail in the tire on the Tahoe. You wouldn't believe we went through an act of Congress today to finally get that thing fixed. I mean, just all kind of little aggravating things. But there's a lot of people out there going through some stuff that they don't understand why. But they just have to hold on to God and trust Him. And if Brother Logan's listening tonight, I'm going to dedicate this song to him. And also I want to dedicate it to Brother Ralph tonight. Because you can't make it without the Lord. Amen. <clears throat>
just want to talk to Jimmy one more time. He always had the right things to say. And um, I told y'all this morning, I don't, I don't need to bore you with the story. But um, I was talking to Weston about five minutes before I left. And he said, he said people just don't value life anymore. Weston don't, not really, he don't really talk a lot about things, you know. And um, he's pretty quiet unless he's at home with us. But um, he said, people don't really value life. And I said, no, they don't. He said, I could have died. I said, you sure could have. And um, he hugged my neck and told me he loved me. And he don't do that a lot either. And I um, had a little bit, about 45 seconds of an emotional moment, and then it was over. And um, But I just thank God for his protection hand. And I don't really know what's going to come out of all this. I don't know, um, but I can tell you that if I'm living in a cardboard box and driving a little rattle trap car at the end of it with Veston, that's okay. You know, I still got him with me, and, and that's all that matters. And I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Oh, yes, and God. I know we all got stuff going on, but I posted something today on Facebook that I posted two years ago. It said, you know, do this. You feel that? Everybody feel the heartbeat? That's a purpose. Yes. And you're blessed. We're here. And everything else is just stuff. It's just stuff. That's what Michael Jimmy would say. It's just stuff. And um, I'm just blessed. Amen. So that's what I'm going to say. Amen. And at the end of the last course, I'm going to walk around because, oh, did he start that? Where, where when we get a miracle, we're supposed to walk. I think my Uncle Jimmy started that. And I didn't do that this morning. <laughs> So on the last course, I walk around. Y'all walk with me. Amen. 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 Whatever you say, whatever you say. When he walks among us, all that he does, all of his mercies and all of his love, is a pin of a
20 years ago, I was facing heart surgery and I didn't understand why. And uh, Brother Ray Whittington was here and he prophesied somebody's gonna get healed of their heart. And I know that I needed a healing. But he didn't, he didn't call me out, just somebody here is gonna get healed of their heart. And, you know, I thought that was me. But it wasn't me, it was Sister Mankey. Which, no problem. But during all that, the Lord gave me a song is, I don't understand what I don't understand. Amen. And you know, that, that takes you down the road sometimes when you don't understand it. Yeah. That if you'll be faithful to Him and true to Him, then you'll understand it. That's right. That's right. And He brought me through, you know, I'll be 20 years come October. Amen. I've had no problem with my heart. No medication for my heart. You know, that just blows, that blows people's mind when they say you, you had heart surgery and you're not on meds. Right. No, I'm not. Amen. But the Lord will work things out no matter what yeah. it looks like or how dim it yeah. gets. Right. He's still in control. Yes. Yes. You know, nothing, best and direct do not catch God unaware yesterday. Right. Right. He knows. Yeah. Called us unaware. Right. When I seen it yesterday, I thought, oh, no. And then I told Gail when she came in there. But it didn't surprise God. I mean, he knew it was coming. So anything you're facing, just remember, he already knows us that what's going to take place before we know what takes going to place. Yes. Which is good, because sometimes I know what's going to take place, I'd probably be a basket case. But I just thank the Lord for watching over me and bringing me through that. Sister Ellen asked me and Gail to sing. I know we've had a lot of singing, but I don't know how to sing one more. But you know, I just thank the Lord for, for walking with me for 20 years and giving me that song. You know, that it helped uplift me when I was really down. Yes. And, you know, he can do it for any of you. You know, just sometimes just the word. That's, that's all we need. Just bring that to us. And, but, you know, just once in a while, one word is all we need to uplift us when we're down. You know, it might not seem much, but it can be. And I just, you know, I thank the Lord for everything y'all pray for. I don't think we've sung since we got back and both run out of air, but we'll make it.
but verily God have heard me. He have attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which have not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Let's do it one more time. It's short. But verily God have heard me. He have intended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which have not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Stretch your hands this way and ask God for his anointing. Would you do it? Lord Amen. God. Brother Donnie, go ahead and lead us. Father, Lord God, we just ask you to touch Father, we ask you to touch your servant. Father, we ask you to touch your servant. This anointing, Lord God, we believe in the word to say, Lord God, help us understand tonight, it, Lord, Lord God. It's all for you, Lord God. We're going to praise you, Lord you God. Do it for we have to turn our eyes on you now, Lord. We praise you. Amen. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. You know, I've preached all around these thoughts, but I, I don't know, to my knowledge, that I've ever preached with the subject title, God Knows My Voice. I've preached a lot of times, and even lately, that, uh, uh, that God knows us, amen, and we know his voice, amen. I've preached a lot about that, amen. i preached about knowing the voice of God, but I don't think there's anything more... Uh, appropriate to rejoice about is that he knows my voice amen, amen. i've had people uh to call me and you know you really get kind of uh tricked now because everybody's got names on the phone you know and i call people and they say how you doing preacher and i'm not sure whether they know my voice or they got me on a voicemail and they see my number come up i call a lot of people in the church and a lot of times it is that I know their voice, and, but I have people call me from phones that I'm not familiar or not in my uh, contacts, and I hear, have people say, you know who this is? And I, I got a favorite line. I say, help me just a little bit, amen. <laughs> help me just a little bit to know who this is. I got other people that call me, this son that's called me 10, 15 years ago, and they call me right now and say, what you doing? I say, hey, brother, if you just handed me your phone, I would know who it is. And that's good to know. But I tell you, it's better to know that he knows my voice. Amen. The Bible said, but verily God hath heard me. Amen. Heather sang the song uh, that he's heard me. Amen. Uh, that he has heard me and he's answered my prayer. Your prayers have been answered. Amen. Many songs have been written like that. But all the time, your prayer don't get answered right then. The Bible talks about uh, praying in the spirit, praying with the understanding. Sometimes we don't even know what we're praying for. And I can look back at my life. Amen. Uh, Betty uh, got a song on the uh, CD that just says, looking back over my life, I can tell you that God's good. And it said, for a matter of fact, God's great. Amen. And all those songs we sung of praise ought to stir our heart tonight because uh, of what we preached this morning and for no other reason, just that, God delights in his understanding and worshiping him. But tonight I want to talk about God hearing my voice. Let me give you a couple of scriptures, another scripture or two, and then I'll preach this a little bit as the Lord lays on my heart. Psalm 64 and 1. I believe it's the next page in my Bible. If you want to look at it, he said, Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. It's wonderful to know that God hears our voice. Amen. Uh, I believe I, I got that one for you. Amen. But I can tell you tonight that God does. I was going to testify just a little bit and tell you how this message came about a little bit. Uh, the other day I was uh, praying, and some are maybe touched on this morning. Some of you didn't hear all this, but uh, but but Sunday or last Monday went on vacation. I can tell you, I remember a lot of times, you know, going on vacation and uh, had to rush back here that somebody home had died, you know, here that somebody's family had died, uh, somebody's member had died. I've never hardly remember many times going off. Uh, several years ago, went off with Janice and Jack Hovis, Betty and I, and and we made it all week. Had a good week and on. Uh, Friday night, I believe it was, or Thursday night, or uh, Friday morning, Saturday morning. Uh, you know, you know when this was, but when the young man went into that theater and killed all them people, 
But we drove home with that on our mind. All them people there didn't have any idea. I don't remember the number, but it was a mass murder. There was many. And uh, I've had other occasions where I've, I've left. I've had to go late because I had to preach a funeral before. Had to come back early because I had to preach a funeral. And I asked God Monday morning, and I didn't even know what I was praying for. Shared it with Betty uh, Monday evening, and nobody else didn't know it. Even my children didn't know it. But I shared it with Betty. I said, let us have this week with no death. Amen. No death in this week. Let us don't hear about nobody that we know and love. And I love everybody, but I'm talking about my family and my friend. I can't call every name, every minute of the day, every hour of the day. But I, it, it may be to some a routine, but it's to me, my life, what I got to do. When I get up in the morning, if I'm rushed, I, I try not to leave the house. Without I say, God, watch over the members of my family. And that would be Betty and myself and my three children, their husbands and their children. Amen. It would be them. I pray every day over them. Uh, when I uh, went off, I prayed that prayer. I prayed that God watch over the church. And I do that every morning and every night. Watch over the church and all their family. Some days we go three or four days and don't hear from nobody. Amen. And some days we hear from everybody one day, it seems like. You know, it's just the way it is. But I asked God for a week of no death. Amen. And we got up uh, Friday morning and Betty and I prayed one more time before we left. We held hands. And I said, God, I'm not, I thank you that I had not heard of no deaths in four days. We going home now. And I don't know what the highway we got to, and you know, we, we, you know, we knew the way to go, but we followed GPS and went a few miles out of the way and, and had to get back on track and uh, all things worked together. We were going to be home at two or three o'clock and, uh, you know, I told Betty to go this way and it was the wrong way. And you, you've all done that. You know how to do that. And uh, we messed up. But all along, God was working a miracle. Heaven was already notified of everything that was going to touch our life. But it was strange the way it come about. We ended up back at Monroe at 4 o'clock. And, and by that time, we got a little bit over being upset at GPS. So we started listening to it, thinking we was going to have to go through Charlotte. And, uh, uh, you know, just some good things happened. For the first time I rode on that toll road, I go up there every other week. But I rode on that toll road, and I mean, it's amazing. You can get from, uh, you know, uh, where 485 ends to, to 601 in 10 minutes if you get on that toll road. Amen. No red lights, nothing. I, I never paid it, and they send you the bill, and I've understood it's about 2 or $3, but I don't know how much it is. But I told Betty I'd have given them 5 I'd have given them 10 <laughs> You know, it's like somebody saying, I'd like to have that for a one, and you for one dollar, and you look and say, I'd give you ten. Amen. I'd about give you anything for that smooth ride. Then we got on 485 and things changed. But when we when we got on 485, you know, we by that time I was driving, Betty was watching, and I was telling her, uh, she probably already knew, but I said, look over on 485 and 85 and see if there's any red on there. If they are, that means the traffic stop. She said, it looks pretty good. All the way to 85. She said, in 85, and this by this time was about 410, 415, or 420. Said, there's an accident. I didn't even hear whether they said north or bound lane, north or south bound lane. But they said, there's an accident on 85, and that, that's just commonplace. You know, you hear it all the time. You know, if somebody had heard, uh, been to Charlotte, I'd never heard nobody that said they did, but I'm sure it was shut down two or three hours when I had my wreck. Amen. So it had been shut down, and, and we got back to Charlie's house to pick up our dog. She had had the dog while we were gone. We went straight there, hadn't unpacked or nothing, and got this dog and sat down just talking to Charlie for just a minute. And the, the phone rang, and Summer said, Dad, said, everybody's all right, let me tell you first. Said, but beston has been in a multi-car wreck. Seems like it sounds like yours, but he's okay, and it's over on 85. And I thought, Lord, you held me from that. You've done everything you could to keep me from coming on the scene. Because if I'd have been in that traffic and, and tied up for an hour and she had called me and told me, you know, it would have been worse than when she told me, he's all right, I'm with him, he's not going to the hospital, and it seems to me that everybody here is as good as he is, four cars are total. If I'd have heard that and hadn't heard it from Summer, 
Uh, you know, if, if, if it wouldn't have scared you, then you don't feel the same way I do about my children. Amen. It would have scared you. But I got there, and he was certainly all right. Amen. And, uh, you know, he was there. But after it happened, I realized it took me to about 7 o'clock or so to get my thoughts together. We was trying to get the car away from there and get it to the best place because he didn't have the, 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 the extra good insurance and they were, you know, all of that. We was just trying to do everything we could to help him. But when I slowed down about 7 o'clock and he was there and the car was there, Tim and Charlie was there, we was all gathered together, everybody was safe. It was just like the Lord spoke to me. I answered your prayer this morning, and I'd all forgot about it, you know. He said, you didn't see no death today, amen. You didn't see no death today. I mean, he's a mighty God, yes. amen. And, uh, you know, I just know that today, and I, looking back through my life, I ain't telling you I won't be long. It's five, eight, or seven if you run out on that or the battery goes dead. If not, you can stay with us till we finish, and I'll obey the Lord. We had to stay to church over an hour in a long time. It won't hurt us. Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. It won't hurt us. Hear the word of God. Then I've been praying all year, and I could see people that would say things, but see, you know, when you're going through something, like some of you do, and I know about some of you, and I won't embarrass you and call nobody's name, but when you're going through something, nobody but God knows what you're going through. Amen. And people can give advice real quick, you know. I tell somebody a lot of times, and you know, you can say it's doubt. I said, I just can't hardly get over Jacobus being gone. I just can't hardly get over Tim Reason being gone. I just can't hardly get over Kim McCaskill being gone. One thing is that, you know, really to replace them, there's people doing their jobs, and I appreciate that. But we haven't found no replacement for Jacobus. Hadn't found no replacement for, uh, you know, Jim Eason. And we hadn't had no found no replacement. Uh, the only we've had people come in occasionally and play the bass, but you hear the sorry job I'm doing, and we all I got, amen. And we just go on praying. God give us another bass player. Give us some more people. To, give us somebody to sit on Jimmy's row. We know he's not coming back, but we miss him. He impact he impacted our lives, and we miss him. And I know there'd be people say, well, my brother died. My church member died. It didn't do me like that. I don't know how you felt about yours, but I know how I feel about mine. Amen. And it hurts me that they're not here anymore. I have to get over it. And somebody would just, I, I, I know the attitude, you know. Uh, people say, you know, you're not the first one to ever lost your bass player or your uh, Sunday school teacher or your Sunday school superintendent or, or your family, your friends. You know, uh, Jimmy was more than just a member. He was Betty's brother. We've had a hard time. I'm telling you, only God knows. And I've had people say, well, I had it happen to me. Y'all just need to get over it. Y'all just need to trust God. Y'all need just to leave it alone. But, but you know, what gets me from day to day is I know that I can't walk without him holding my hand. And I know that if he don't hear my voice, I'm in trouble. Amen. And, and I, it amazes me, you know, uh, just to... You know, I just prayed for that deal with Veston and didn't even know what I was praying about. And then with the, this other thing, it's been going on since January last year, almost two years. January, be two years we're dealing with this and just can't hardly get by. Have I prayed every day? Probably every day. I prayed for one of those families or for our family or Betty that's struggling from losing her only brother and the only family member that she's got immediate member left, amen, and uh, you know, you got your children, you got your, uh, you know, uh, some people's got their brothers and sisters, I, I, I got adjusted to that a long time ago, my mom died when I was 20, my daddy died when I was 29, amen, so that's a long time ago, and uh, I spent more time with Adam than I had with them, somebody hear me, uh, if you still got your mom and dad, and you're 50 or 60, 70 years old. You ought to thank God every day that you still got them. Amen. You ought to enjoy that. Amen. But don't never talk about nobody else. It wouldn't affect me like that. You don't know how it affects you until it happens to you. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. But that prayer has been going on two years. And I'll, I'll quickly and I'll close. Uh, but uh, Charlie went to Paris one time when she was uh, 20, 20, 19, 20, 21 when you're still in school, she's in college, and uh, I was working, and she called me one day, she said, Daddy, there's a free, uh, she thought she couldn't go, but at the last minute, two days before they left, 
going to be gone six weeks in Czechoslovakia and the Paris, France, and all these places, helping the mission. She's going to be gone six weeks. And at that time, I never rode, rode an airplane. And at that time, as far as I know, she never rode an airplane. And, uh, you know, since then, I've rode it a lot. You know, I worked a job where I had to fly every, every, every year. And, and I, in two years, earned 40, 50,000 frequent flyer miles just from going once to every month, every other month. And, and at that time, it wasn't like that. And I just stood up, and Charlie was her firstborn, and she was about to leave home anyway, going to college. And I knew college professionals and, and, and marriage was in her future, and, and that she might come back home someday. But I just really feel like that I knew that God was about to put her on a life of her own. And I remember that I was the only one that bucked up the people, and she had to have $1,000 in, in, in five days or something like that. And you, some of you people here that are here today, remember that. And you helped get that money together. And, and I gave her some money. And friends of mine gave her some money. But to the day she left, I was just tormented. I mean, you know, two or three weeks. And then the six weeks. And everybody said that, you know, it's just, it's just you. I said, I don't know what it is. I'm not just her daddy. I'm her pastor. And I feel worried about her. I'm trying not to worry about her. Uh, but anxious about her. You can use whatever word you want to use. But I just felt like, and I know we're not supposed to worry, and I know none of you don't ever worry about nothing. I'm not, I'm not picking on nobody tonight, but I'm just telling you, six weeks, seven weeks, I guess. She's gone six weeks, and, and a new week before, so seven weeks. I worked every day. I was flying in and out of the country myself. I got that job a day or two after she left. I had to start flying. And it was a little easier, but it was a little bit more scary, you know? I mean, I was 40-some years old the first time I got on uh, the plane, and I sat beside a, a 19, 20-year-old about Charlie's age that worked at Disney World, and she flew every day, and she, 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 she helped me a lot. She knew. I didn't tell her, but she knew I'd never been on a plane before because I didn't know what to do, how it was going to work out. But I said all that to tell you this. The day before she came home, her and her friend was together. They finished their work at the mission, and they were coming home. And the day before she come home, I said, Betty, I feel better. I said, I feel like it left me all that six, seven weeks. And she said, well, you're just glad she's come home. You know, she wasn't, it wasn't her fault, but I was. And I thought until Charlie got home that that's all it was. I just, this thing's about over. We're day in, out of, uh, getting out of this. And I'm just so happy about that. But I really know that when I, I know now what it was, the day, that day, we compared times, there's a time difference, seven, eight hours, or something like that. But ever how much they were from where she was at, they had to get on it after they finished in Czechoslovakia. They got a train ride to Paris. And it was just a treat for those kids. They probably never get to go back and never been before. So they took them by there. And on the train, her and her friend was standing there and uh, this guy walked up to him, but they didn't know in another country. And he pulled a knife and he said, give me all your money. I mean, when I got the victory, let me tell you what happened. He hears your voice. You can be the voice in the wilderness crying. You can be the only one praying, amen. but he hears your voice. Amen. And I remember, I remember with all my heart, her telling me that her friend, I think her friend did it, not Charlie. She said, in the name of Jesus, you're not going to get our stuff. And said, so he threw that knife down and took off running off the train to the other end of the train. Amen. I'm telling you, I prayed for seven weeks and didn't even know what I was praying about. Amen. Somebody hear me tonight. I just believe God's still God. Yes. And he always will be God. Amen. And we've had other times. I said, Betty and I, you know, when Summer had her, uh, you know, a kidney failure 20, uh, 16 years ago when Beston was born. We thought we were going to lose her. Now he's 16 years old. The devil tries to make you think you're going to lose him. He's just a liar. Amen. He's a liar. Doesn't stop him from praying. And I don't know whose prayer God answered with Summer because I, everybody that said they was a Christian knew how to pray. Everybody that I knew, I called them up. I said, my daughter's got kidney failure, going on dialysis. She's 24 years old. Doctor said she'd be like that the rest of her life. Amen. And they pray, and I pray. Jimmy had a Jimmy had a, a, a Easter play going on over here, and uh, we were with her 
but I came over to see it. As some of you may remember, had to uh, he, he did it all. He had it all set up here, and it was real good. He had a cross sitting up here, and uh, you know, my son Brad was on it, and it looked like every picture I've ever seen of Jesus on the cross. And I wasn't praying. I wasn't praying to. I wasn't praying to Brad. I was praying to the Lord. Brad was the actor. I wasn't praying to Jimmy. I was praying to God. But I came in late, and I remembered what Jared said. Jared said when his daughter was sick, and Jimmy made testimony. I ain't said it too much because I ain't taking the credit for it, but I just know that God answers prayer. Amen? And uh, she'd been in the hospital two weeks in intensive care, hadn't got to come home yet. And I uh, was fixing to, but I didn't see how she's ever going to come home. They'd give her some medicine, knock her out. She'd wake up, and she'd get sick again. And that went on for six weeks. And I didn't see how she's ever going to get to come home like that in my flesh. But I was still trusting God and believing God. And Jimmy made reference. I come down that aisle, and it was the middle of the play. And I don't even know what was going on. I fell down on those rocks Jimmy had set up. And I remember Jared's prayer. I said, Jesus my little girl's in the hospital at the point of death. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel the presence of God. Amen. And she come home in a day or two. Hey Amen. She started getting better, still on dialysis. And, and uh, you know, in June, sometimes in June, she got better and better and better. And finally, one day, the doctor told me, and he said, uh, I thought it was her calling. She was going to the doctor at 3 o'clock at 3.30. At 3.30, the phone rang. I said, well, that's summer. I looked, and I think that old phone I had at the time said summer calling, and what it said. And so I looked at it, and I said, well, maybe she called and tell me what the doctor said. And I said, hello, just knew it was her. And a man's voice on the other end of the line said, Reverend Chambers. I said, this is he. He said, I just want to be the first to tell you. This is Dr. Griffin. I just want to be the first to tell you. I'm taking summer off of dialysis. In 16 years, she's been off of it. I mean, I don't know who's praying her, but I can tell you it went on for months. We prayed for months. When she looked like she was going to make it and be on dialysis, we didn't quit praying. We just kept praying. And there's a like story with, uh, there's a like story with, with Brad. You know, I won't go into it now for the sake of time, but the same thing. Troubled us for weeks and finally had to get a doctor to tell us before we didn't realize that the miracle was really there. He didn't have what this diagnosis was for, and he was in high school, and he's 31 today. So God's tried to tell me over and over and over again that he hears my prayer, and he hears yours. He knows your voice. One last family story. Come home from, I'm telling you that to prove something to you. With, with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, when Charlie was a baby, she got sick one night. Most of my church people have heard me say this. Got called home from work in the middle of the night. Went home. She'd been up all night. You just had to see her. Let me tell you sometime how sick she was. Betty put her in my arms, and she had a fever that would make her hands get too warm. You know, I mean, it scared you how warm it was. And I walked around in my house, and I, I prayed all the way home and listened to Jimmy Swaggart sing all the way home, There is a River. And I went in and picked her up, and I said, Charlie, uh, she had nicknames. I won't get into all that. I don't want you to list, lose, lose the point here. But I called her name and I said, I, I've been, I've been, kind of, and God was working on the other end because when I left work at McCandle, I told Betty, I said, get ready, get your clothes on. Quick as I get there, we'll just turn around and take her to the hospital. You know, I, I didn't know how to handle that. But on the way home, I prayed. I listened to that song. And as I did and, and got home, and I, I just took her, and it was like the spirit of prayer came on me. As far as I know, nobody didn't know it. I don't know if Betty called her mother. It could have been somebody else praying. But I think it was still between me and Betty and Charlie. Uh, and, and, and I don't think Summer, Summer wasn't here then, so it was just me and Betty and Charlie. And we walked around that room, and I could show you. My nephew lives in that house, but I could go back unless they totally remodeled it. I could show you where I walked around that house with her in my arm, maybe 18 months old or something to that effect. I walked around, around and around and around, anointed praying, anointed prayer, feeling the presence of God, feeling like I wasn't going to get no defeat that time. I was going to get that prayer answered. You ever felt like that? And I walked around and walked around and walked around. It was Saturday morning, I do remember now, because 
And you know, I didn't have to work that day until Sunday night, and, and it was the third shift I was on, and all the beds, you could see the mattresses, they had changed every sheet in the house, you know? And we didn't have any more clean, probably had some in the washing machine. But we laid down on that mattress. I got through with her praying. I, I, I guess it was five, ten times. I didn't even count them. But I, I quit when I felt like I got the victory. I walked back into bed and I handed her to Betty. And her temperature was as normal as mine just tonight. I'm telling you. And we went to bed. Betty hadn't got dressed, so she didn't listen to me about getting ready. And God didn't want me to go to the doctor. You know, God will force you to trust him sometimes. And when I saw how sick she was, I mean, I thought she just uh, uh, like a little baby getting sick. But I think she was past that. Amen. And I called on God, called on God. And when I give her back to her, she was cool as a, a cucumber, I guess, is the best. She was normal. Her temperature was number, normal. And I gave her back to her. And I'd worked all night. Betty worked all night with her. And Charlie had been sick all night. I tell you, we didn't do nothing. We just went toward the bed. All three of us laid down on that bed. Woke up at 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock. I don't slept all day. You know, in Jesus, easy prayer, hard prayer. You know, the difference is there. Uh, the, the scripture says that verily he has heard me. Amen. He have attended unto the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which have not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Amen. Aren't you glad of that tonight? Amen. Amen. You ought to praise him today that he's that kind of God. Look at Psalms 39. Let me give you a couple of scriptures and we'll close real quick here. But I'm still not heard. If God ain't through, I'm, I'm all right. We'll go as long as we need to. But chapter 39, chapter 40, excuse me, of Psalms, uh, said, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Amen. I'm glad he hears her voice. Read a couple more verses there. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my going. The next verse of the next lines that he's put a new song in my mouth. Amen. I'm glad he does that for us. Amen. There's several in the Bible and I won't touch, but touch on them. You can come on back. Be making your way back. It's not like this morning. I ain't going to be through in a minute, but I'll be through in five or ten. So you could be thinking about what you sing and get ready to sing, you know. I'm glad, you know, I, I love that song Heather and Raven used to sing, He Heard You, amen. He heard you, he can hear you, amen. Whether he does the answer that we want or not, that's, that's good and important at the time. But looking back on my life, I can tell you, that wasn't the important thing. The important thing was that he could hear me, that he heard my prayer. And I thought about two or three people in the Bible, and I won't get deep into them, but but I'll just tell you, Daniel, the one that Mitch Song mentioned, he prayed 21 days, three full weeks, it said. And he didn't quit praying. The Bible said he prayed till he had no more strength to pray with. And that's when the angel came to him and said, God heard you the first time you prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just because it don't come. I wish every story I could tell you and it probably wouldn't wouldn't be wanting for nothing and I'd be living on uh, in high on the hog today, I guess, if that was the truth. All I can tell you today is that in my flesh, I wish every prayer I prayed was like that one that I that, that I prayed that night for Charlie. But I can tell you a lot of them ain't. A lot of times when we pray or it are not. But I can tell you that a lot of them I pray for days and days and days and don't even know what I'm praying for like that. But God knew that God was going to threaten her life at the end. And God had her with the right person. Maybe she wasn't strong enough in the Lord. Maybe she was. Maybe God was just using that other girl. But when she told him, you ain't taking what we got, he left. And as near as I could tell from the time back then, I feel like it was when I started feeling better, better about the whole deal. God was working all the time. Heaven had already been notified. Somebody hear me tonight. You need to hear that tonight. Hallelujah. When Paul prayed all night on the shipwreck, I'm telling you, he prayed all night, but he didn't quit praying until he come out there and said, Men, be of good cheer. I've got good news for you. I'm paraphrasing the God of whose I am and whom I serve, I've been with. And he's told me everything's going to be all right. 
But they would have liked to hear, we're going to land safely on the shore in the morning. Everything's going to be all right. That ain't what he told him. He said, if you stay in the boat, God's going to take care of my life and your life and all the prisoners and all the centurions and all those that are with us. Amen. Amen. Going to take care of all of us. But the ship's going down. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm bothered about this world's condition mostly because I just see so many people lost. And, uh, you know, there, there was a movie a few years ago and there was a line out of it and somebody used it and put it on a shirt one day. And you might know the movie. I, I just remember Brad and, and maybe some of my kids watching Brad telling me about the line. And, amen. But I saw a shirt that imitated it. He said, he said, uh, uh, some people are lost and don't even know they're lost. Some people are dead and don't even know they're dead. Amen. They made fun of us that some people are stupid don't know they're stupid. Amen. But the point is that some people tonight, I can tell you, don't even know, don't even know that God is there with you. Amen. And sometimes we have to learn. And every time, these prayers were so different. Amen. Daniel prayed 20 days, one day, Paul prayed all night. And then Stephen was the last one I was going to tell you about. The Bible said he prayed calling on God. Amen. He died calling on God. Uh, the breath was going out and stones was bouncing off his head and his body. He was being stoned to death. Somebody hear me today. And he called on God. And the average person, the infidel and the agnostic and the atheist and those that could have been watching that scene said his God did him a lot of good. Well, they just don't know. Amen. They just don't know what he did. Amen. But all of a sudden, it left him, uh, whether he was going to get out of that or not, and he just ran back and said, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. The Bible tells us he's seated at the right hand of God, but that gives you all kind of encouragement. If he has to, he'll stand up. If he has to, he'll come down where you at. Somebody hear me today. The important thing you need to know is that God heard your prayer. Hallelujah. And more than that, he knows your voice. Whether you whisper it like I did tonight, I was laying on the bed, couldn't sleep, and all of a sudden he just speaks to you, and you don't even remember it. Next day you wake up remembering it, and you didn't remember going to sleep. He said, when you get up in the morning, I'll still be God, and Satan will still be defeated, and I went right to sleep. Sometimes God answers like that, but sometimes you're not even praying about it. Amen. I told you just weeks ago how that in a business deal, uh, this man wanted the deal, and it was going to cost me $500, and I made the deal, and I told him, didn't know him that well, I told him, I said, I'm going to go ahead and do it. He said, you sure? I said, yeah, God will give it back to me. He said, you sure? I'm positive God will give it back to me. But I didn't even pray. I never prayed a prayer. I turned around did my business, and there was somebody there doing another business deal that I made $500 more than I wanted. Amen. So, I mean, before I left the lot, God gave it back to me. And I didn't even pray it. I just, by faith, said, God will give it back to me. And I really believe that. I believe that I get out of a doctor bill or God will bless me with another sale down the road or whatever God wanted to do. I believed he would do that. See, what we don't know is when you see those things and God's moving in our behalf, and we don't even act like we know that God's moving. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. But he was there. One songwriter said all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 One last verse, and I'll let Tim sing. You can stand your feet anytime you'd like to. But there's one last verse. If you go back to that text scripture you know everybody tells you what they're going to do and, and there got to be a disclaimer added to it and it says uh, you know you must be 21 years old you must have a college education you must have this and you get really excited and I don't know how many times salesmen have lied to me and told me I qualified for something I went down there and I didn't make enough money my credit wasn't good enough you know, I was too obligated. Whatever the situation was. But, you know, and I'm not looking for a disclaimer myself. But all I can tell you is I believe God put it in an appropriate place. I quoted that scripture all my life, but I just quoted one line. And I quoted it lately. 
But verse 19 and 20 we read, if you back up to 18, David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I got unforgiven uh, sin, I know some people don't think they got any, but you know, if you just get real with God, if you got anything you need to pray about, go back to fix. I mean, you know, I know people are mad at me, but I can tell you tonight, I'm not mad at nobody about nothing. And I got more peace in my God in my life than I've ever had in the God I serve. Amen. Somebody hear me tonight. Hallelujah. And there's people I don't understand what they did. And I wish they hadn't have done it. We talked about it till I was blue in the face and they did it anyway. Amen. They ain't do no good. All it does is worry you to death, make you sick. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Victory. Postpone, I'm not saying it right, maketh the heart sick. Amen. You get sick when you've been praying and praying and praying and praying and nothing hasn't happened. But if you can just trust God and know that God's real. Amen. He is. Amen. Tim sing as a chorus, a verse of the chorus, whatever you feel that to worship with him tonight. Amen. church and, and, and not my former friend, but my friend for 40 years. And I thank God for him. Uh, he suffered some type of heart attack. Pray for him that uh, when they do the uh, heart catheter on Tuesday that everything will be alright. Somebody hear me tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Pray for all of these. Pray for Diane Johnson. It just seems like his one more that I want to pray about, and it just won't come. But just pray for all these things tonight. I know who they were. Holy Woody talked to Betty today. She's been real sick. Be much in prayer for her. And the other one I was trying to think of is Calvin Owens. He used to come to church here many years ago. Uh, uh, he's he sent word for me to call him, and I got it on my list of things to do before I go to bed tonight. And he's all had all kind of problems, thought he was going to lose his foot, ended up losing a couple, uh, you know, a couple of uh, toes and, and uh, you know, from the diabetes. And uh, he calls me when every time he has a situation, he lost my number. He got somebody to give my number to call me and give me his number, but I still had it on my phone. And I will call him sometime today 
that he found out last week that he's got cancer. He found uh, he got kidney problems and he, he found a, a, a transplant waiting on him. Not too long ago, maybe the last year, maybe two years, but in his list of problems and sickness that he found out he was having this problem with diabetes and he might even lose his foot so he lost the chance to get that kidney. Somebody hear me? And he didn't lose the foot. He lost a couple toes and last week he got the word that he has cancer. Hey Amen. We need to pray for all these people. Believe God. Pray with us if you would. Everybody pray. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. And that I, I hope somebody believes that God hears our prayer. I believe that some of these people that called in believe that God heard their prayer. And that's the reason. That's the reason that they took the time to write it down. And that's the reason we take the time to call it. Because you hear our prayer. You hear our voice. And you know what we need tonight, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't you love him? Aren't you glad he knows your name tonight? If you listen to the stream and he knows who you are, we've got a lot of uh, uh, calls there tonight. I want to tell you, God knows your name. Hallelujah. God knows your name tonight. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to let you go. Have a good night. Thank you for streaming with us tonight. I hope you got something out of the Word. And Lord willing, we'll be back here and you'll see us Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. God bless you.